Hi, so this might be a little bit of a surprise that it's not just a screencast, but I, I personally appear in it. Uh, but this is a new format uh, I'm trying to experiment uh, with, uh, with my, the help of my son, who is making uh, some video editing. Um, as you can notice, that there were a couple of months uh, that I didn't know any, any of the screencasts, and uh, I really hope that I can uh, gather some energy and make some uh, more uh, movies. Uh, and it's fun because, uh, especially now that it's going to be a family business, uh, still I, I, I really need your encouragement, your feedback. So whatever you think, just please comment on the on the screencasts. Uh, go back to the earlier ones uh, if you like them, upvote them, and um, tell ab tell about them to your friends. And uh, if you if you like them, then please also subscribe to the to the channel so you will get notified when the new uh, uh, videos are uploaded. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, let's see the, the screencast and see what we can uh, learn about Rakuto Star, the recently released uh, version of uh, the application. So Rakuto Star was released uh, at the end of April as a source code version, and uh, a couple of weeks ago I managed to create a binary version of it with an installer for Windows. In order to download it, you can go to the Rakuto.org website and uh, see the topmost uh, blog post. Uh, with a link to GitHub and the download area where you can uh, find, first of all you will find here the source code version and here above that is the executable in installer. Just download this file and once you download it, double click it and uh, install Rakudo. Don't be surprised, uh, currently Rakudo can be only installed in, a, in the pre-compiled place which is currently C Rakudo. But once you have installed it you can go to the start menu, all programs and the Rakudo star entry where you will see the Rakudo REPL. Clicking on that you will get a, this black window with a, a prompt. In, their pro in that prompt you can actually type any kind of 12.6 code and for example this one will print out 42. You can go to the various examples I gave in the other screencasts and try in this REPL. The one I'm going to show it now, show now is the module which is called HTTP server simple. So the first thing we can load it into memory and then we can call the new method and on the new method we can call the run method and once we did that it will open a web server so we can go switch over back to the browser and reload the play the location localhost 8080 and you will see the response of that web server. Going back to the rep REPL uh, pressing Ctrl C will kill both the web server and the REPL. Let's see the, this example in a bit more details. I switch back to uh, the browser where I have a tab open to the GitHub uh, the location, the source code of the HTTP server simple module. And here you'll see an example subdirectory. In there, the first example is basically the same as we had we seen. Uh, we we'll use uh, the module to load it to the memory and then we create an object of the same module. So the first part of this line, this one, uh, declares a variable called server with a type of HTTP server simple and then the assignment calls the new method on the actual name of the class and assigns the object to the server variable and here we run, call the run method on it. And that's how we can create a script that will be a very basic web server. The second example is more complex. In this one, we already created a um, subclass of the uh, HTTP server simple, uh, which is called example simple small. Uh, at the end of the script, here you can you'll see that we call uh, the new method on that subclass, getting the server object and the run method of that subclass. The subclassing itself has three uh, attributes and then three methods to assign values to those attributes and then the most important part is the handle request which, sub which overrides the same named uh, method in the superclass. Uh, the only thing it really does is prints out some HTML code that will be displayed in the browser so it prints out uh, the name of the current object, the class name, uh, the host name, the port number and then a table, an HTML table within uh, which it will display 
the key value pairs of the header. In order to run this, we have to download this script, uh, which I already did, and it's in the directory and the examples directory of the, the GitHub clone. Here I can run prol602 um, and run this uh, uh, script. This, uh, the, the fact that Perl 6 is in the past, it was done by the installer itself. Now that uh, you can see the web server runs, so I can switch back to the browser and go to this same address. And if I reload the page, you will see, first of all, you have the name of the class, then you have to see the host name and the port number and the details of the, uh, of the actual request. I can type in further uh, values here where you have some kind of a pass, key value pairs, and you will see that the query string is here and the pass is here. So while the, while the module itself, the HTTP server simple, is a bare bones version of an application, of a web application server, but uh, it's something that you can start building on uh, and you're welcome to play around with it. So I hope you enjoyed uh, the video, and uh, if you liked it really, then please upvote it, uh, comment uh, whatever you think, uh, what kind of other things you would like to see, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, so you will get notified next time I'm uploading a new video. See you next time, bye bye!